so let's start. Uh, good morning, everyone. We are group nine. So today we are going to talk about our project with you, which is emotion regulation in internet addictive behaviors. Um, next. <laughs> yeah, let's start with a short video. Many parents consider too much screen time a bad thing, but new researchers found it could be the case for some teenagers. It found many addicted to the internet experience difficulties relating to their emotions. Elizabeth Moss explains. Catching up with friends, keeping up in class, and even staying fit, it's all at the touch of the button for Sophie Rosinski. Probably about two hours on my phone each day or more. And coronavirus restrictions have meant the 13-year-old's been spending a lot more time online. We couldn't see our friends and family. We did lots of Zooms and catch-ups, like for my birthday and stuff as well. And also sporting. We did Zooms each weekend and did lots of fun and fitness. In this time we're in, it's an, un it's a necessary evil. But for some, it's more than a hobby. It's an addiction. A study of close to 3,000 Aussie teens found compulsive internet use over time leads to difficulties regulating emotions. Particularly in setting goals and persisting with difficult goals in their life. Um, and the classic um, example of this, of course, is, is doing study at school. Researchers believe reducing and monitoring internet use could be the only... Yeah, as you might have heard, uh, yeah, uh, internet addiction is a big problem among young people and uh, it relates to emotion regulation. Uh, about emotion regulation, uh, it's a psychological term defined by growth as the activation of a goal to influence the emotion trajectory. In psychological theory, six well-recognized uh, human emotion regulation strategies are acceptance, avoidance, problem solving, reappraisal, uh, remuneration, and uh, suppression. So emotion regulations uh, ability differs from individuals and uh, impacted by cultural factors once adoption of emotion regulation changes over time. Um, emotion regulation process is also found to play a vital role in the internet or social media addiction. Uh, internet addiction is associated with greater difficulties in emotion regulation and uh, it seems to act as a dysfunctional regulator of uh, emotion distress. An inadequate ability in emotion regulation could be the reason why social media addiction happens to some individuals. Uh, about anti-depression therapy, it can restore um, synaptic plasticity for certain cognitive functions, uh, which makes the person feel better. Yeah. <laughs> so this is our base model. Uh, we base our model on the ice cream model from Yen's book. Uh, uh, you receive stimulus from outside world after a series of um, inside reactions, you eventually execute an action. Uh, this model can also be used in emotion regulation process. Yeah, next. Uh, yeah, so this is um, the base layer of our model. Uh, the subject is a depressed person who suffers from a medium to high level of stress. Uh, so the main elements in our model are uh, first, stimulus from outside world. There are stress and social media from outside world. And second, the adoption of three different emotion regulation strategies. Uh, they are um, uh, control states of avoidance, reappraisal, and suppression, uh, as well as belief states. So addictive internet use is as a technique of avoidance strategy. And uh, reappraisal is to retell the story in a positive way. The, the person thus holds a positive belief, it reduces negative beliefs. About suppression, uh, meaning um, not expressing negative feelings or beliefs, uh, which you can see um, uh, like uh, the B. Yeah, so the treatment state. Uh, the treatment state means um, 
um, uh, means therapy to depression, uh, which is focusing on reducing negative feelings. Yeah, next. So this is, uh, yeah, this is our model. And in, as you can see in the first and second layer, the plasticity and the metaplasticity are presented. Uh, emotion regulation strategies can be learned or unlearned. Um, so they are adaptive. The connection weights and uh, learning speed change over time uh, as you learn. Um, the threshold of resisting social media or the internet is also adaptive, uh, meaning the more you use the internet or the social media, the more vulnerable you are to it. Yeah. So we use this model to investigate uh, two different scenarios of the same person. And this person suffers from uh, depression. Uh, typically, this person suppresses emotions rather than reappraising negative thoughts. So if uh, something bad happens, this person puts on a poker face. And uh, this person has some mood swings, uh, but over time, uh, the negative belief state is always a lot higher than the positive belief state. Uh, and further, this person seeks out for avoidance when this person feels bad. So uh, in this case, it goes to social media. And this social media makes this person feel better for a little while, it gives a short term positive feeling. Uh, but next time this person starts to feel bad again, this person goes back to social media. And this way it goes on and on and this is a type of addiction. So we investigate first uh, this person uh, in a situation without therapy. And second, we will investigate this person in a situation with therapy. So ultimately, uh, this therapy will help this person to uh, learn how to reappraise negative emotions. So to start, rethink again and get out of the negative cycle uh, this person is in. Eventually, it can result in a more positive thinking, a more positive belief state, where this person doesn't need any avoidance anymore, doesn't need to go to social media anymore and feels better over a while and has a more uh, healthy emotion regulation. So here we see a situation uh, without, uh, without uh, therapy for the avoidance regulation. These blue lines, those are the avoiding, uh, avoiding a problem. And we see it goes up and down. And this is what happens if the person goes, feels bad, goes to seek out for avoidance and feels better for a little while where avoidance is not needed anymore. But next time, this person keeps on going back to this avoidance. Um, what we also see here are these green, green lines. And those green lines are the healthy, natural emotion regulation states. And we see that it has the opposite shape of the avoidance states, meaning that uh, avoidance is not so natural and healthy. Here we see the emotion regulation in the situation without therapy. So the reddish lines here are the negative beliefs, as well as the uh, grayish lines. So these are the negative emotions and we see it also goes up and down, but it's always uh, yeah, quite often quite higher than the positive belief, which is the black line below. So uh, there are some uh, mood swings, but even over time, this person stays more negative than positive. And here we see the reappraisal and suppression. So with those mood swings, the reappraisal goes up, of the suppression, sorry, goes up and down. So uh, this person really, really uh, uses suppression uh, to deal with emotions. While the reappraisal stays pretty low over time and it's always uh, lower than the, uh, rear, uh, than the su uh, suppression. So uh, the person is not very likely when he or she feels bad to uh, reappraise thoughts and more likely to uh, suppress uh, negative thoughts. And now we look at the situation with therapy. So at time 200, the therapy has started and the therapy has stopped at time 400. And what we see is that the uh, avoidance regulation it all goes down. So that is what we want. The person is less uh, addicted to social media. The threshold uh, to go to avoidance goes up. So this means that next time the person feels bad, the person is less likely to go again to social media. 
and these green states uh, here above are uh, the healthy emotion regulation states. So that goes up again, which is also uh, what we ultimately want with uh, therapy. This is the emotion regulation. So what we see here is that those red lines, those negative emotions, and this gray line, all those negative emotions uh, go down after therapy because of uh, yeah, reappraisal. And what we see here also is that the positive emotions, so it, for instance, this black line is the positive belief state, it goes up and it has a little bit of a dip after therapy, but eventually is higher than uh, before and more constant. And this is uh, the reappraisal and suppression. So the red line, that is the uh, suppression of emotions and that goes down. And this therapy makes the reappraisal work again. So we see a little bit of an increase in this green line, but this increase is enough to get the um, plasticity and make the plasticity of reappraisal work again. So this person has a more healthy reappraisal uh, uh, emotion regulation. So to conclude, uh, we have uh, combined artificial intelligence and computer science uh, to model uh, uh, behavior found in psychological research about uh, a social media addiction uh, as well as emotion regulation. And we have seen uh, the patterns found in the literature are also found in, uh, in our simulations. And we have also found that the therapy has a really strong impact. Uh, it really can make not only the suppression go down, but also uh, can help people to get out of an addiction if uh, the reappraisal gets to work again. And uh, of course, this model can be elaborated further for other types of addictions. Actually, all the uh, types of addictions where people seek out for avoidance to deal with negative beliefs. So you can think of seeking out of the actual world uh, by gaming, you can think of game addiction or maybe alcohol abuse or maybe drug abuse and so on. 